This morning, the U.S. women's national team suffered a shocking defeat to Canada in the semifinals in the Olympics. But the question is, should we be shocked? Here's what went wrong for the U.S. women's national team. Alright, just a disclaimer before I jump into the video, I've already started seeing hate being thrown at players and that's not okay. Also, the loss is not Tiana Davidson, AD, or Alyssa Nair's fault, and if you think that, you are a fucking idiot. Underperforming vets. I have two people I would like to exclude from this list, and that's Tobin Heath and Kristen Press. Uh, Tobin Heath was putting in very good performances, especially in the first half against the Netherlands. Tobin was the only person, maybe other than, I don't know who else, that was able just to get something going, and I think that a lot of people critique her. A lot of people say Tobin is not what she used to be, and I disagree. I think Tobin has had a very solid Olympics. Kristen Press, she wasn't given much to work with. Uh, I felt like players did not try to seek out her, and I didn't think that she just got a lot of opportunities. Bad tactics. All right, so this one frustrates me the most. Let's talk about this, overplaying Julie Ertz. I know this was said multiple, 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 multiple times uh, by commentary and other people, but Ertz is a key player in our midfield. Ertz suffered an injury just before the tournament began and didn't make an appearance to the New Zealand game, right? So when you know going into the Olympics that Julie Ertz is hurt and you're looking at your roster, you said, all right, Ertz is our basically defensive midfielder and one of our only. We need, we need depth, especially if Ertz is not ready in time. It looks like she will be, but just in case. And what did they do? They didn't bring the one player who I thought really couldn't make a difference this tournament, especially after watching the first few games, and that's Andy Sullivan. They, they should have brought her at least as an alternate, and then who could have played once the roster size was increased. However, this was not done, and as the tournament went on, it was very clear to see that Julie Ertz was not at 100%, especially with how many minutes she played, and that's not her fault. All right, Julie Ertz gave it her best. She was hurt, and it was obvious to see Julie Ertz was clearly overplayed, and that led to a downfall. Starting lineups. Abby Dahlkemper had an unusually bad tournament. I mean, she's usually consistently very good, um, very solid for club and country. But she just didn't have a great tournament. And in a knockout game, Vlaco played Abby Dahlkemper instead of Tiana Davidson, who had been having a pretty solid tournament up to that match. I think that just shows, I don't even know what the fuck Vlaco you're doing. We were having problems with our defense. With our defense. And you decide to play Abby Dahlkemper over Tiana Davidson. That's not Abby's fault. I mean, she had a bad tournament, but she, she'll bounce back. But... That wasn't the game to do it, especially against the Netherlands when they have the most lethal striker, I think, in women's football history, Vivian Miedemar. She's insane. That is not the game where Abby Dahlkemper should be trying to bounce back. Let's speak also about the Netherlands match. Um, I woke up I woke up and saw the roster at like 2.30 or whatever fucking time this game was being played and said, we are going to lose. Um, Roosevelt, before this game, against the Netherlands, had scored twice in our last two game matches against them. So why wasn't she playing? She's able to set up plays, create space, and score goals. She has an amazing left foot, and we've seen that in both tournaments. She scored bangers. Why was she not in the starting lineup? I know you want rest and rotation. Maybe if we, if our players cannot do, meet the physical demands, maybe there's other reasons there, and we need to look at that. But she should have played. Flacco did not bring the right roster, all right? Why bring both Macario and Christy Mewis if you aren't really going to play either? I personally would have picked Mewis because Mewis had just been on... F she's just been more consistent, but Macario hasn't really gotten any opportunities. And she's really young, so bring Mewis. Mewis is more experienced. I just don't think Flacco brought our best team, and it really let us down when we needed it to. Overhyped players. Alex Morgan. I have a love and hate relationship with Alex Morgan as a player. Sometimes I just, you know what? I really think this sums up what I feel about Alex Morgan. Hey, sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. The lack of discipline she had with the amount of goals that were called back for being offside was insane. I expect better from a player who is experienced in his qualities, Alex Morgan. And I just feel like that really hurt us because we had about like nine goals that were called back. That's insane. If we are the best team in the world, we should not be that undisciplined. Megan Rapino. Listen, Megan Rapino had a very nice 
stretch of games leading up to the Olympics. She scored five goals this year. But the tournament, she was a major letdown. Rapino thrives on the wing, being able to deliver a beautiful cross in that could be either tapped in, scored, whatever. But she just couldn't build up play to save her life this Olympics. She had countless sloppy turnovers and just seemed to be a step behind most times she was on the field. I don't know if either she was tired or what, but most, she didn't start most games, I believe. I believe she came on as a sub most games. I don't know. I don't think... Her age is a factor. I just really think that, I don't know, I expected better. But you know what? She's still Megan Rapino, but overhyped. Listen, I know everyone is calling out Carly Lloyd, but I'm going to do this for a different reason. A lot of people hate Carly Lloyd because they think that she feels like she deserves to be on the team. I don't know. All I'm going to say is I want someone on the, you know, the look at the problem we have right now. Look at our forward court. We have Rapino, Heath, Press, Morgan, Williams. Lloyd, am I missing anybody? I don't know. I mean, Lavelle can play up a little bit, but those are most of those players. I believe everyone except Lynn Williams is over their thirties. Is over the age of thirty. That's insane. We brought an aged forward striker, whatever you want to call it, core. Press is insane on the wing. So is Heath. It's I don't know. The problem is, is we brought an age core, and right now we have one striker, maybe two. Out, we have one striker in the in the playing pool that has experience playing at a high level, and that is Mal Pew, and who's been fucking killing it for the Red Stars. Play Mal. I've been saying this. Problem is, I don't know if he was ready in time for the Olympics. We're gonna start this transition period that we need to get. That Rapino is gonna be done soon. Lloyd's gonna be done soon. But we have some up-and-coming ballers like Pew, who's still young, Sophia Smith, Morgan Weaver, Bethany Balser. Like, I see a lot of potential in a lot of these players, but they're not giving opportunities. And I think sooner rather than later, if we want to be ready for the next World Cup, we're going to start having to give them more opportunities. But honestly, let's talk about Carly Lloyd more. I think she's physically capable. Her just her abilities aren't the same. Since the World Cup, Carly Lloyd's gotten so many opportunities and she can't finish them. And this was especially apparent in this tournament. The US struggled with finishing. And I don't know who else we would have brought. I don't think I think Carly Lloyd deserved her spot on the roster, definitely with the roster size getting increased, but she's just not the same. But she does ball out for Gotham. So don't get that wrong. Alright, this is my, this is a point I've been preaching and preaching and preaching for a while now. We've been absolutely trashed since the World Cup. This is something I think many people are scared to point out. We have been, we have an extremely old squad with most players in their 30s. Since the World Cup, we have faced very little competition and the teams that we are competitive with were Spain, we almost lost. France, didn't have other players. Sweden, should have lost and then lost. The Netherlands didn't have Miedema and should have lost. Even when we were playing teams and we're crushing them, we showed lots of signs that should worry people. For example, not finishing opportunities, many sloppy turnovers, and not being creative enough in our play. If we want to be able to compete with teams like Sweden, France, Germany, and the Netherlands, we need to step up. We need to get better. We need to be playing against better competition. We are sinking to lower levels. I know Alex Morgan said, I believe it was Alex Morgan said, these teams are just playing their best against us or are we playing down? That makes them look better. Most of the teams we play with no have no funding. So of course we should beat them by a lot. Unless we make some big changes, I don't see the 2023 World Cup going in our favor. All right, these are just a few reasons why I think it went wrong for the U.S. Women's National Team in the 2020 Olympics. Now I think we can bounce back in time, but we need to make some tough choices before that. Now I know I wasn't as positive as I usually am in these videos, but you better bet your ass. I'm waking up way too fucking early to watch the U.S. versus Australia game. Let's get the fucking brunt! Alright, <laughs> it's been your girl, Cabriel. Leave a like, subscribe, comment down below. What went wrong? I want to know. And, uh, it's Monday, but peace.